Now I can explain what's going on there and there will be a few more of those explosions later on in the video, but first some background. Now TPU tubes have been on my radar for quite some time now, ever since companies started making bicycle tubes out of this thermoplastic polyurethane material that is super light and super low volume, so it packs down nice and tight. But given their launch price was around $40 to $50 per tube here in Australia, I haven't had any hands-on experience. Thankfully, there are a few alternatives now out there on the market, coming in at around 20 Aussie dollars. Now, why these have been on my radar is that I wanted to know what the compromise was with these super light, somewhat fast tubes. Were they hard to install? Were they brittle? Were they fragile? What's the catch? Well, after spending the last week with these tubes, I have some answers on that. Okay, onto the products at hand that I did pick up as media samples from Eurobike this year, starting off with the XR brand, which is Machine's high performance brand, and their road tubes, specifications on the side of the box, 700C, so for road wheels, 36 gram claim weight, compatibility with 23 to 28 mil tires, and a valve length of 60 mil, which will suit my tires. You get the manual, the tube itself, and an anti-rattle sticker for the valve stem. Okay, let's put that on the scales, 36 grams. As claimed, all right, happy days with the valve cap as well. The equivalent from Ride Now is their SV65 race formula. Super light, long lasting, they claim. Put that on the scales, coming in at 34 grams. Now, the difference with these is they have a little rubber grommet rather than an anti rattle sticker. And onto their very amusingly packaged super light version of their race tubes 24 grams, anti rattle sticker. And on the scales, coming in at 23 grams. The tubes I'm going to be installing today are the Machine XR ones, which are certified to be used with rim brake wheels. The best I can explain the feel of these tubes is a cross between rubbery and plastic, which is kind of what they look like too. So I have the three tubes there on the screen, starting off with the super light ride now there over on the left, the standard ride now one in the center, and the Machine XR tube there on the right. The super light one is more pliable, feels a little bit more stretchy, and the other two are about the same. More on the elasticity of these tubes, here's the super light TPU from Ride Now, returning to shape pretty quickly. The standard TPU tube from Ride Now, a little bit less stretch in that, but still returning to shape pretty quick. And the XR tube from Machine, about the same as the one I just showed you before. So they do have a bit of stretch to them, and they return back to their normal shape pretty quickly. Now, as a comparison here, the Schwabel Butyl Tube, which is a super light tube, has a lot of stretch to it, but its return is, it just feels really, really dead. I'd call this lazy. Best way I can describe it. Too often we see these tubes marketed, as you can see here on screen, wrapped tightly in a little circle with the valve stem sticking straight out in a shape that you'd never just throw them into your saddlebag. So the question I had was, what's the practical space saving in a saddlebag. So up against the butyl tubes, there I have the standard butyl tube out of the box, one I've packed down as tight as I can, and a real world packing of a TPU tube. I'd always put them in a little plastic bag. So that's the reality of what I'll be using. Weight savings on that, 111 grams on that one, and the TPU tube only 42 grams. Space saving, throw it in the bag, up camera llama, there we go. It takes up about half the space, plenty of room for Dyna plugs or an air tag. Now to the installation of these tubes and a bit of backstory about why I'm converting these perfectly fine tubeless wheels and tires over to tubes. Well, it comes down to maintenance. This bike gets ridden outdoors probably once or twice a month. And to be honest, I cannot be bothered checking sealant levels. And as you can see there, there's next to no sealant in these at all. I can't remember the last time I even checked these. So one, Less maintenance for this bike, having tubes, and two, some hands-on to find out what these tubes are all about. Now the tires are in pretty good condition, the Pirelli P0s, so back on with those. A little bit of air in the TPU tubes, and to my surprise, these were a lot easier to install than latex tubes. They held their shape, there was no pinching, and they just blew up very, very easily. The tyre seated quite well. The hardest thing was that anti-rattle sticker, which took me a minute or two to clean up the rim and get stuck down. Once that was done, good to go. Rinse and repeat for the rear wheel. And just like the front wheel, there was next to no sealant left in these at all. So thankfully I hadn't punctured out on the road. And 
We'll clean all that residue out. Tire back on in the right direction. Again, a little bit of air in the tube to give it some shape. And installation straightforward. So I'd be pretty confident installing these out on the road if I needed to as a spare, which is what I carry them for in my tubeless setups. All right, 80 PSI, everything's seated just fine. Anti-rattle sticker on and good to go. All up, about 20 minutes for the conversion. Back to tubes on this bike. Happy days. So I have had the chance to take these out for a few rides as the sun finally appears back down under here as winter is coming to a close. Here is Mrs. Lama and I rolling towards Creswick on some relatively rough roads. I'm running in these tyres at about 80 PSI for my weight and the bike weight. And look, let's be honest, they're not as smooth and as cushy as running a 28mm or a 30mm tyre in a tubeless configuration, but they do just fine for what I need. Now, as luck would have it, and this is definitely not a setup, one of us did get a puncture on this ride. It wasn't me, however, I was tasked with putting some air back in the tyre for Vaughn. The sealant eventually doing its job, allowing us to get enough pressure into that rear tyre to get us up and rolling and back into town. Now back onto my bike, and look, after a number of rides, I've been happy with the performance of the TPU tubes and the configuration that I've got for these wheels. No performance increase, no performance decrease, but the big checkbox is there's less maintenance for me to perform on this bike, which comes out only every now and then. It's definitely not my A ride, so to speak. If you do want to get really, really nerdy with TPU tubes and the performance side of things, I highly recommend checking out BicycleRollingResistance.com. I'll put links in the video description below. It's definitely worth checking out if you're into the performance side of things and product comparisons, because not everything is created equal, including TPU tubes. Two more quick things worth covering with TPU tubes is the fact that you can get patch kits for them. So it's not just one and done if you do get a puncture with a TPU tube. And the valve cores are not replaceable. They are glued in. So if you have valve extenders, they may not work with this configuration. Or if you bend the top off those little valve cores, which I'm known to do every now and then, it's uh, game over for the tube. So it is important that you get the correct valve length for the wheels that you'll be running. And finally today, onto some pressure testing of these tubes for no other reason than just to simply blow things up. We'll start off with the Butyl tube. We'll go with the Super Light tube from right now. We'll then go to the Race Formula and then onto the Machine TPU tube. Safety first, I've got earplugs in, safety glasses on. I think we'll get this out of the way. And I'm keen to see how these tubes hold up because one good way of knowing about how something is made or how well something is made is to break it. I expect these are going to break. All right, standard butyl tube, which from the stretch test was what I would call lazy. Okay, here we go. Jesus. Okay, that didn't take much at all. That was a super light tube from Schwabel. Okay, <laughs> got me actually. Okay, next on to the super light race tube, the one that gave the most stretch from the TPU tubes. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Those two bits that are expanding are facing my face. Okay, take it for the team. Let's go. Oh my word. <laughs> okay, two down. Next up is the standard race ready or race formula from right now. A little thicker, a little bit less stretchy on this one. <sighs> oh, this is fun. Okay. Whoa. Let me just turn my face away from that. Oh! Okay, that had a bit of kickback on my hand. 
three down. That took a lot more pressure than the other two. That's currently winning the pressure game. I do have a gauge on this, but I'm not quite going to look at it and have my nerves shot while it explodes in my face. This is just for fun and science. Well, that's actually quite interesting. That blue, the, um, with that kickback, actually snapped the valve. Clean off the ride now one. Stress testing to the extreme. Okay, machine. XR, sorry, the XR one, the high performance. Now I'm guessing this may depend on the temperature of the tire too, or the temperature of the environment it's in. Come to think of it, let's go. Oh, Jesus, alrighty. That didn't take much at all, but <laughs> my nerves are absolutely shot for those. Uh, no real benefit in seeing what happens just there. It was interesting that the ride now valve actually snapped off at that pressure. Look, no one's ever going to be running those tubes at those pressures or at that expansion anyway inside a tire. You do have to get the correct size of the TPU tube for the tires that you're running. And that's probably a good example of why not to run those in mountain bike tires if they're built for road. So there we have it. That's my experience with the TPU tubes. I do have the Machine XR ones on the Giant TCR. And as mentioned earlier in the video, they've been performing quite well. I'm keen to hear your thoughts on TPU tubes. Good, bad, do you carry one for a spare? Are they too expensive? Hit me up in the comments below. We'll see you down there. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.